I'm Scott. I have a business cooking on fire, cooking on truffle oak that I've called O'Fair Truffle. I, I, I generally don't know how I came about it. I started doing a bit of cooking for, for, for some of the jeets we have, but actually it wasn't particularly worthwhile because we had uh, two jeets and one was for eight or so and one was for six or so. And then we had the idea of putting the two jeets together uh, and all of a sudden we were at 14 to 16 people. Uh, and at 14 to 16 people, it makes sense to make food. And, and, and somewhere within that time scale, I started building barbecues. I built the barbecues because I love doing it. I built the barbecue because I love the theatre of cooking on wood. The first thing I built was the open pit. Um, and it's not very complicated. Uh, you put your fire in the middle and you do all sorts of things with it. But it's by far the one I use the most. It's the one that people like to come to. I can do all sorts of things with it. I can uh, cook pots on it. I can rotisserie uh, chickens and pigs. But today I'll be putting on a plancher and making some burgers. Uh, the wood that I use is truffle oak. Marini Mamond, where we are, is known for its truffle production. Oak is an excellent wood for that. For, for heating, for cooking. Um, so it felt ideal for me to move to cooking um, exclusively on truffle oak um, because it's a product of the region and it's a good product. The next um, cooking equipment I bought was uh, the smoker. And this is a hot smoker. It's a um, firebox at the bottom. So your fire goes in there and then you cook the food at the top. So here you're hot smoking things. You can use things like uh, pork, um, briskets, uh, short ribs, uh, sausages. Um, it's very much uh, an American style of barbecue. I had this in mind for a long time, got to building it, and then I thought it doesn't cost much to add a bit more height on top so now what you see here is is quite a significant capacity probably uh, a thousand litres the table is, isn't a barbecue um, at all but it's probably the most convivial thing I've ever built when the fire is going uh, particularly the open fire People love to come down here. They love to stand around here. They love to talk. They love to tell me about their barbecues. Um, they love to tell me about things they've cooked on their barbecues. Uh, the fire, something primordial. It brings people together. Um, it's a great equaliser. Actually, it wasn't hugely expensive to do all of the work we needed to do, but the bureaucracy I needed to do was the same bureaucracy as opening a restaurant. Um, so I went through with all of that and at the end of it, it turns out I opened a restaurant. I have something that I can serve my guests when, when we have guests and I have also something where I can operate a full restaurant when we don't have guests. Building this, I built the ring around it uh, with the idea of adding things on and by far the best thing I've added on is this plancher for cooking on. I really liked about doing the burger competition is to show people in a rural area that I can bring a burger to Marini Mamond that's as good as a burger you'd find in the city. You know, it's up there. 
I've got a bit of paper or an aluminium plaque that says that it is and that's not something people around here are used to. But the first time I did pulled pork, I got like four customers. It's brutal. I uh, mint the beef uh, and brown this balls myself. I make the bread myself. Um, it's uh, potato bread, so it's got mashed potato in it. And I also make the cheese. That means I take normal cheese and I turn it into burger cheese, which is um, a process by which you turn cheese into plastic cheese. Uh, that means that rather than separating when it melts, it melts all gooey. Uh, my memories of burgers are fast food burgers. I, I think all of the interest in burgers is fast food burgers. I think bistro and brasserie burgers are shit. They're trying to be gastronomic and the last thing a burger is is gastronomic. It's uh, well, the most democratic food in the world which means it's accessible to everyone, which means it's not gastronomic. If you like beef and you want something gastronomic, you have a steak and have a burger. The reason I built the kitchen here is because it was the cheapest place to build it. Uh, it's good that it's near my barbecues, um, but equally it didn't need any foundations. Uh, and it didn't need a roof that cleared water because I'm building it inside a hangar. There's still a lot of finishing to do to the outside, but the walls and inside are built to all the codes um, that I can find. It's all registered with the relevant authorities. As far as uh, I'm concerned, it's as, it's as good and as safe as any other kitchen you'd find. Here's the kitchen space, and it's quite a unique uh, kitchen space because unlike most kitchen spaces, doesn't really have anywhere to cook. Essentially, it's a prep area. I've got my fridges, um, I've got my hot work area, I've got my sink and my bins, uh, 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 separate from that. And the most important part of what I built here is the fridge. And, and there's a way of thinking about it. The whole, the whole room is just for the fridge. And the fridge has got four compartments where I can have uh, dairy, meat, vegetables, and prepared foods. My plan is as I move forward to move all of my cooking outside, which uh, sounds strange to cook, but uh, when you can cook with fire, why would you want to cook inside? Lila. <laughs> Um, I do uh, a rotation of kind of three uh, uh, meals. So uh, I do burgers, which I do a lot and people love. Uh, and then I'll try and do a barbecue classic, uh, which might be pulled pork, it might be ribs, it might be something else. Uh, uh, and then I try and do a French classic which could be a bourguignon or a tartiflette or something, but I do kind of my way. So I, so I started to try and do these three things and the more I got into it, I got into a point where actually there was a fourth one I wanted to include that probably to go from two of the other three that was uh, things I want to do. So I do lots of food from around the world. I do tacos, I do tandoori, I've got a tandoori oven. Um, I love doing new things and uh, people in France uh, have got very clear views on food and new things and something they necessarily go after all the time but slowly and slowly people are coming and trying these things and finding the joy of, of exploring different countries through food. Big thank you to Scott. I have to say that those burgers were delicious. And I've tried some of his other takeaways and they are also magnificent. Um, all of their details are in the description below. And if you would like for us to come and film you and you want to be featured on our channel, get in touch with us at livinginthelois at gmail.com if you have a Jeep business, if you have an interesting story about living in France, anything like that, get in touch with us and we'll get back to you and hopefully you'll be featured on the channel. See you soon.